It's good to be home. It is good to be home. Y'all organized some good weather for me, too. Thank you. Uh, I, should, I, I should mention to the... Uh, I should mention to the national press that uh, the weather's not always like this uh, in late October, early November. But it is a spectacular night, and you guys look beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are you so you're fired up and ready to go? How about you? Are you fired up and ready to go? sleep in my own bed tonight. Now Chicago, in three days, you have the chance to set the direction of this state and this country for years to come. And just like you did in 2008, you can defy the conventional wisdom the kind that says you can't overcome cynicism in politics, you can't overcome the special interests, you can't overcome the big money, you can't overcome all the negativity, you can't overcome the big challenges anymore, you can't elect a skinny guy with a funny name to the U.S. Senate or the presidency. In three days, you got the chance to once again say what? But this is a tough election. It's tough here in Illinois. It's tough all across the country. And the reason it's tough is because we've been through an incredibly difficult time as a nation. It didn't just start a year ago. It didn't just start two years ago. For the last decade, for the last 10 years, the middle class has been getting a tough time. Between 2001 and 2009, the wage, the incomes of the average middle class family went down 5%. Between 2001 and 2009, job growth was slower than any time since World War II. So families were seeing their incomes go down even as their costs for health care, their costs for college education, their costs for groceries were all going up. Folks were having to keep two, three jobs just to keep up. Meanwhile, too many jobs were disappearing overseas. And all this culminated in the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression and the worst economic crisis since the 1930s. So families that were already worried, already having a tough time, already having to skip going to the doctor because they didn't have insurance or already having to say to their kids, maybe you can't go to college this year because we don't have the money. Things got even worse. We lost four million jobs in the six months before I took the oath of office. 750,000 the month I took the oath. 600,000 the month after that. 600,000 the month after that we lost almost 8 million jobs before any of our economic policies had a chance to take effect. Now, when I got to Washington, my hope was that 
we could bring both parties together, that we could put politics aside to meet this once in a generation challenge. That was my hope because although we are proud to be Democrats, we are prouder to be Americans. And I believe, in, I believe then and I still believe now that there are a lot of Republicans around the country who feel the same way and a lot of independents around the country who feel the same way, but, but the Republican leaders in Washington, they made a different decision. Rather than roll up their sleeves and get to work, they looked around and they said, boy, we made a really big mess. We made such a big mess that it's going to take everything just to try to solve it. And it may not be solved in a couple of years. Well, so many folks have already lost their jobs. So many businesses have already closed. We might be better off just sitting on our hands, sitting on the sidelines, and just going after Obama and saying no to every single thing he proposes. And then maybe the Democrats will get the blame when people get angry and frustrated for the lack of progress. In other words, the other side, their political strategy was that all of you would get amnesia. That was, that, that was their strategy. They're, they're betting that everybody around the country would forget who caused this mess in the first place. So Chicago, it's up to you to let them know that we have not forgotten. We don't have amnesia. It's up to you to remember that this election is a choice between the policies that got us into this mess and the policies that are starting to lead us out of this mess. If the other side wins this election, the chair of a Republican campaign committee promised the exact same agenda that we had before I took office. Now, let, we know that what that agenda was. We know what that agenda is. They want to cut taxes, mostly for millionaires and billionaires. They want to cut the rules for special interests. They want to cut middle class families loose to fend for themselves. So if you're out of work, tough luck, you're on your own. If you don't have health insurance or the, your insurance company drops you when you get sick, too bad. You're on your own. You're a young person trying to make it to college, but you don't have a lot of money. Too bad. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You're on your own. It's the same agenda that turned record surpluses into record deficits. That allowed Wall Street to run wild that nearly destroyed our economy. So I, I, I bring this up. I, I, I want to just go down memory lane there for a moment. Not, not to re-argue the past, but because we don't want to relive the past. We've been there before. We've tried what they're selling, and we're not buying it. We're not going back. Around the country, I've been trying to describe it this way. Uh, imagine the American economy as a car. And the Republicans were at the wheel and, and they drove it into a ditch. And it's, it's a steep ditch. It's a deep ditch. And somehow they walked away. But we had to go down there. So me and all the Democrats, we, we put on our boots and we rappelled down into the ditch, and it was muddy down there, and hot, we're sweating, pushing on the car, feet are slipping, bugs are swarming. We look up, and the Republicans are up there, and we call them down, but they say, no, we're not going to help. They're just sipping on a Slurpee, fanning themselves. They're saying you're not pushing hard enough. You're not pushing the right way, but they won't come down to help. In fact, they're kind of kind of kicking dirt down into us, down into the ditch. But that's okay. We know what our job is, and we kept on pushing. We kept on pushing. We kept on pushing until finally, 
We've got that car on level ground. Finally, we got the car back on the road. Finally, we got that car pointing in the right direction. And suddenly we had this tap on our shoulder and we look back and who is it? It's the Republicans. And they're saying, uh, excuse me, we'd like the keys back. And we've got to say to them, I'm sorry, you can't have the keys back. You don't know how to drive. You don't know how to drive. You can ride with us, but we're driving. And we're going to have the middle class sitting right beside us, because they're the folks that we're fighting for. Look, because of the steps we've taken, we no longer face the possibility of a second depression. The economy is growing again. We've seen private sector job growth for nine months in a row. But we've still got a long way to go. We've still got a lot of work to do. All across this state, from Carbondale to Elgin to Quincy to Chicago, folks are hurting. There are too many folks without jobs. Some families are hanging on by a thread. That's what keeps me up at night. That's what keep Pat's up, keeps Pat up at night. That's what keeps Alexi up at night. That's what keeps us fighting because we know that we've still got a long way to go. See, we've got a different idea about what the future should hold for families across Illinois and across this country. And it's an idea rooted in our belief about how this country was built. You know, we, we, you think about our stories. Pat came from humble beginnings. Alexi, from an immigrant family. Me, you guys know my background. We didn't, we didn't come to the scene, we didn't come to the scene with a silver spoon in our mouth. Here. Our families worked hard and they knew the government doesn't have all the answers to our problems. We believe government has to be lean and efficient. We believe that free enterprise is the greatest engine for prosperity ever known to man. But in the words of the first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, we also believe that government should and must do for the people what they cannot do by themselves individually. We believe in America that rewards hard work and responsibility for everybody. And, and creates ladders of opportunity. We believe in a country where we look after one another. Where we say, I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. That's the America we believe in. That's the America we know. That's the choice in this election. We believe in an America that invests in its future and in its people. We believe in an America that's built to compete in the 21st century. We know the jobs and businesses of tomorrow will end up in the countries that have the best educational system, the best infrastructure, the strongest commitment to research and technology. I want that nation to be the United States of America. There's no reason why China should have the fastest railroads or Singapore have better airports. We're the nation that built the Transcontinental Railroad right through Chicago. We're the nation that built the interstate highway system right through Chicago. Today, we're seeing America put folks to work, thousands of people building new roads and railways and runways, because that's what America's about. We build. An America where we build an infrastructure for the 21st century, putting people back to work, doing the work that needs to be done. We see an America where we invest in homegrown innovation and ingenuity.